Thank you very much and welcome to the beautiful electorate of Perth, the most diverse place in the Southern Hemisphere and this wonderful time zone. And I do like to welcome our token heterosexual here on the panel and I noticed she put out the feelers for a marriage partner and one of the few heterosexuals in the audience I can see is Jimmy Yong. So Jimmy, be very, very careful tonight. Be very careful. Now ladies and gentlemen, marriage is a beautiful thing. Marriage is a wonderful, wonderful institution. Marriage is one of the most important social customs that has existed in humanity over the last few hundred years that it's been in existence. Marriage is the epitome of selflessness. Marriage is a ceremony. Marriage is a legality. Marriage is a wonderful, wonderful thing between a man and a woman. Marriage, by its definition, is a heterosexual activity. Ladies and gentlemen, a horse is a horse. A camel is a camel. And as much as a camel might think, gee, it'd be nice to be a horse and to be in a paddock and to have people like Lisa Baker on my back... A camel is not a horse. But a camel is not second rate just because it's not a horse. A camel is diverse. It is different. It has wonderful attributes. And a horse may be able to run in the Melbourne Cup, but a camel may not. But that doesn't mean that you're second rate. Now, I respect marriage very, very much. I respect it so much, I don't believe in divorce. I believe in there being one true church, and that is the Catholic Church. <laughs> My parents, both 80 years old, have never divorced. My 20 aunts and uncles have never divorced. My three brothers and sisters have never divorced. All heterosexuals, I don't envy them. I don't aspire to be heterosexual. I don't aspire to their longevity in their form of relationships. Now, one of my cousins, uh, they're all heterosexuals, I must admit, uh, did lay siege outside his wife's uh, farm in the southwest with a shotgun for two nights, but they never divorced. <laughs> they respected marriage. They respected heterosexual marriage and all that it entails. So even though it is a quaint custom, by its very definition, it is heterosexual. But I think it's really important that we don't denigrate gay relationships and gay relationships that have gone on for 60,000 years. Gay relationships, be it Aristotle, be it Noel Coward, be it Oscar Wilde, be it Leonardo da Vinci, by suddenly saying, your relationships don't matter because you weren't able to be married. It's only in 2011 or 12 when suddenly you might be able to be married equally with heterosexuals that suddenly your relationship is validated. Gay, lesbian, intersex, queer relationships do not need the nomenclature of marriage to be valid. We are valid already. And if we're talking about marriage, what sort of marriage is it that we want? Do we want Henry VIII's sort of marriage where you ro rotate, you either cut off their heads, you get rid of them somehow, and in a methodical way you move on to others and at the same time you get rid of the one true, curth, uh, one true faith, the Catholic Church, by starting up your own church? Or do we want the marriage of the president of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, where he's been married five times and he's got three wives concurrently. So he's changed the rules. Is that the sort of definition of marriage that we want? Or do we want to be able to celebrate our own diversity and the amazing number of relationships that gay, lesbian, intersex and other people who are non-heterosexual, even bisexuals, that they've existed in. Now, my first partner and I 
Uh, we didn't take a leaf out of the book of uh, Armistead Morpen, who penned the term of us having significant others. And that was a really quaint, beautiful way to describe your gay partner in the 70s and 80s in San Francisco. So being witty and erudite, we thought we'd exist our own. So we had a sevel, S-E-V-L. We had a symbiotic existence vis-a-vis -vis life. It was one of those things and the relationship didn't last. And fortunately, the acronym or the uh, nomenclature didn't continue on and, grain, and gain uh, large currency. But it was diverse. And it represented what was important to us at the same time. And the issue that we're discussing, it's not about marriage. It's about equality of law, equality of rights, equality of services. That's what matters, not marriage. It matters that in Western Australia, a gay and lesbian couple can adopt a child. What matters is what's best for the child. And if it's a gay parent, a lesbian parent, or a straight parent, that's all that should matter. And that's what should be the, the, the factor that it is the determining aspect in everything of a relationship, no matter what the relationship is. Not so much that it's marriage, not the ceremony, not the piece of paper. If we look at the rights of people in Western Australia, after two years, whether you're gay, straight or otherwise, you can go for the big grab on their assets. So it's two years, cohabitation, whether it's marriage, whether it's gay, whether it's uh, an argument about who gets the horses, who gets the budgies, who gets what. But these are legal issues, these are about access to rights, access to equality. And that's what we're on about. We shouldn't be trying to denigrate our forebears, <laughs> denigrate centuries and centuries of people who long before marriage as an institution was invented lived in gay and same-sex relationships. We shouldn't be saying you weren't valid because you weren't married. It's our diversity that's matter that matters. It's what the feeling is between two people. All that matters is not marriage, it's love. And if there's love between the same-sex people, if there's love between heterosexual people, that's all that matters. We, on this side of the fence, don't believe that we need marriage to validate our relationships. Thank you.